If you ever utilized a BLDC motor in a project before, then you know how important it is to combine it with a suitable ESC in order to drive the motor. And if not, then feel free to have a look at two of my project videos, in which I built a sensorless ESC and a censored ESC. No controlling modern commercial ESCs is done by supplying a PWM signal to the data in pins. This signal must feature a cycle duration of 20 milliseconds and a variable on time between 1 and 2 milliseconds. The 1 millisecond signal represents 0% speed and 2 milliseconds represents 100% speed. And as you can see, our data signal controls the ESC and thus the motor successfully. But the sad truth is that besides this one data signal, we cannot interact with the ESC. For example, we cannot control the commutation process, the PWM methods, the maximum current and so on and on. Which ultimately leads to the fact that every commercial ESC behaves a bit differently and can thus almost be treated like a black box. Thankfully though, I recently stumbled across the VESC which is named after its creator Benjamin Wieder and is an open source ESC. That means all of its documentation, hardware and software related is accessible to anyone. So in this episode of DIY or buy, let's firstly have a look at a pre-made VESC from a manufacturer and discover all of its amazing features. And then let's order the required components for such a VESC, solder it and finally evaluate whether the DIY process is cheaper overall. Let's get started. To start off, I visited AliExpress to search for pre-made VESC, which was easier than I thought. This one should work and costs around $90 plus $20 for shipping. Not very budget friendly in comparison to other ESCs, but hopefully it will be worth it. And after waiting for a week, I received the VESC, which made a very positive first impression. So I hooked it up to my BLDC motor, powered it with 12 volts from my lab bench power supply and connected its mini USB port to my computer. Now the given VESC tool software given by the manufacturer is actually an old version. That is why I visited the official VESC project sites to download the latest version, which you can get for free, but you can also donate a bit of money to support this open source project. Anyway, after downloading, I opened the VESC tool, which after establishing a connection, told me that I used an outdated firmware version. So I let the tool do a firmware update, which was quick and easy. And afterwards had a closer look at all the available setting options, which were honestly too many and thus a bit overwhelming. But here are the best ones. You can use four different common methods as an input data signal. You can auto-detect the parameters of a utilized motor to optimize the ESC's working behavior. You can set a current limit along with an RPM limit and temperature limits for the components. You can test the motor movement with the keyboard and monitor all the important electrical values. And finally, you can use the traditional BLDC working principle, which sounds something like this while rotating. But you can also use the VOC method, aka fault oriented control, which is more complex to accomplish, but can decrease the noise level of the motor to this level. So all in all, this ESC is everything I ever wanted from an ESC, so naturally I want more units of it. I started my DIY builds by downloading the given hardware design files from GitHub. And after unzipping, I got a whole bunch of files and folders, of which the Gerber folder with its Gerber zip file was the most interesting for now. I uploaded this Gerber file to JLC PCB, which I used to order 10 VESC PCBs with any gross finish for a price of $48 plus $23 for shipping. And after waiting for a week, I received the PCBs 
which looked promising even under the microscope. The next step was to obviously get the mandatory components, for which a bill of materials file existed, and thus all the order numbers from Mauser. So I went to Mauser, searched for all part numbers and either went with the minimum order quantity or so many that I can later solder to VECs. The only problem was that not all components were available, so I later chose LCSC to either get the exact required components or an alternative that should work as well. All in all, Mauser costed me 99 euros and LCSC 12 dollars. But let's not forget that the components IRFS7530, which are the MOSFETs, were not available in both shops. For that, I had to visit AliExpress to order 20 of them for $49. So if we would break down the costs for one VEC, then we would get a value of around $86.7, which is not that bad. Next was the assembly, which I initially thought would be easy, but as soon as I saw all the bags with components, I immediately changed my mind. To make the assembly easier though, I printed out the component overview on the PCB and the material list, and crossed off the components once I was done soldering them, to keep track of what still needs to be soldered to the board. At the start, I soldered all 0603 resistors and capacitors to the board, with my hand soldering iron methods, which means I added a bit of solder to one pad, soldered the component in place, and then added solder to the other side. Granted, I might have used a bit too much solder, but overall these solder joints might not look pretty, but should work in the end. And once I was done soldering the bigger capacitors as well as the remaining smaller components to the board, I moved on to the USB port, for which I used the solder paste heat gun methods. This method worked just fine for the USB port, as well as the power inductor. But as soon as I moved on to the MOSFET driver IC and the main microcontroller, things did not work out that well with the heat gun. So I decided to use my hand soldering iron technique for those two ICs, which let's face it, did not work out that well, but maybe it'll work. Last but not least, I soldered the three MOSFETs to each side of the PCB and added the oscillator near the microcontroller. And with that being done, my two VESCs were complete, and it was time to add 12 AWG power cables to them. Now as a comparison, the pre-made VESC draws around 48 milliamps at 12 volts while doing nothing, while my first self-made VESC drew around 74 milliamps, and the second one so much that after a few seconds, a resistor desoldered itself from the board. But after doing a bit of troubleshooting, I found out that the resistor was connected between VCC and ground because there was a short between two pins of the MOSFET driver. After fixing that, the ESC drew around 75 milliamps as well. To program the microcontrollers, I added a 6 pin socket next to them, to whose plug with wires I then added female headers. I connected those female headers to an ST-Link version 2 USB programmer, like it's shown in the scheme or you can also read all about this methods on the VESC project forum. Next, I had to plug the programmer into my computer, which kept disconnecting while utilizing one of the two VESCs. It seems like there was an early hardware problem with this one, which even after 3 hours of troubleshooting, I was not able to fix. But luckily, I still had another one, which worked with the programmer. So I opened the ST-Link software, connected to the microcontroller and uploaded the bootloader and firmware successfully. That means it was time to power the VESC and connect it through the mini USB port to my computer, which to my own disappointment did not recognize the device. Now believe me, I tried fixing this problem in every possible way. But after 6 hours of troubleshooting, I had to give up due to time budget problems. 
So all in all, my DIY versions costed me around $86.7 per piece. And the soldering took around 3 hours. But due to the complexity of the circuits, success is definitely not always guaranteed. That means the winner for me of this DIY or buy episode is without a doubt buy, since it is not only cheaper and easier, but can also support the VESC project if you get the new version of the VESC from the site. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed watching my failed DIY attempts. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.